Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a parametric equation. It's kind of like a system of equations, but the difference is we have two variables x and y, and they depend on a third variable. So parametric equations are pretty common in calculus, especially when the parameter is t. T is used for time most of the time, so you can basically explain the motion of a particle uh, in time uh, in two different directions and then try to find the relationship between x and y. So that's what we're going to try to do here. You can also talk about the derivatives like for example since x is a function of a, a being the variable here, the independent variable, then you can talk about dx over dA. You can also talk about dy over dA which is the derivative of y with respect to a and then from these you can try to evaluate dy over dx. How does y change with respect to x? And obviously we use uh, different formulas, you know, chain rules, so on and so forth to evaluate these kinds of things. Anyway, so for this problem we're basically going to solve for y in terms of x. Alright, so let's see how this works. So I'm going to go ahead and try to simplify the second equation as much as possible. And my goal is going to be to isolate 2 to the power a, which these two equations seem to have in common. So let's go ahead and write the y as 1 minus 2 to the power 1 divided by 2 to the power a. Because when you divide powers with the same base, you subtract the exponents. If the exponents are being subtracted, that indicates division. Okay, so we can work both ways. So from here we can write this as 1 minus 2 over 2 to the power a. Great, so we were able to write y in terms of a but in a simpler form because now 2 to the power a kind of stands out. And notice that we also have 2 to the power a in the first equation. So what can I do with this? Let's go ahead and write the x here. x equals 1 plus 2 to the power a. So there's basically two ways to go about this. One method would be to solve for 2 to the power a from the second equation. Let's go ahead and do this. I can just isolate 2 to the power a. That would be x minus 1. And then I can go ahead and substitute that into the other equation, which has 2 to the power a in the denominator. Make sense? So y equals 1 minus 2 over 2 to the power a, which can be written as x minus 1. Now notice that we got rid of the a and now y is expressed in terms of x. That was the goal. But let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit and I'm going to talk about other approaches, other methods that can be used to express y in terms of x. So let's make a common denominator. This is like x minus 1 over x minus 1 minus 2 over x minus 1 because I can express 1 as that. Obviously x does not equal 1. We can also talk about what happens if x is equal to 1. And then from here we get x minus 1 minus 2, which is x minus 3 over x minus 1. So we made a common denominator and we got y equals x minus 3 over x minus 1. Sometimes in parametric form, it's hard to see what the expression represents, but now uh, this looks like a rational function, doesn't it? And when you graph it, obviously you're going to have a horizontal asymptote, a vertical asymptote, and you're going to have four regions and your graph is going to appear or show up in two different regions, which will obviously will totally be separated. And you also have a y-intercept and an x-intercept because if you replace x with 0, you get y equals 3. And if you replace y with 0, you get x equals 3, so on and so forth. So you can graph this, but that's not the goal. I just wanted to show you what this kind of relationship... So this was exponential, both of them were exponential, and then it just turns into a rational relationship, or relation, however you want to say it. Okay, great, so that's just one way to approach it. Another method would be the following. Let's go ahead and restart. So let's, I guess we'll call the second method. x equals 1 plus 2 to the a and y equals 1 minus 2 to the power 1 minus. So this is a simple example, but I think for the theory, for the general idea, this, uh, these things are good to know. So from the first equation, I was able to solve for 2 to the power a, right? Wasn't I? So this gave me 2 to the power a equals x minus 1. Let's keep it at that. Now, let's do the same thing here. Let's try to solve for 2 to the a. 
So I can do the following. I can basically add this to both sides. So it's going to give me y plus 2 over 2 to the a equals 1. And then I can subtract y from both sides. That's going to give me 1 minus y. At this point, it would make sense if you flip both sides. In other words, the reciprocals. That's going to give me, let's put it here, uh, 2 to the a over 2 equals 1 over 1 minus y. And then I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by 2. And that's going to give me the value of 2 to the power a. And now, guess what? These two things are equal. Because if two things are equal to the same thing, then they're equal. Therefore, x minus 1 is the same thing as 2 over 1 minus y. Since I'm trying to solve for y, let's go ahead and switch these around and write this as 1 minus a over 1 minus y equals 2 over x minus 1. And then we can go ahead and add y to both sides. Cancel it out. And then subtract this x thingy and we'll arrive at the same solution. Obviously, this is going to take longer to do. It's kind of like a more roundabout method to solve. But it works, right? Okay, so that's basically another way to approach this problem. Is there another way to approach it? Let's take a look. We can also, I guess, do the following. We can go ahead and isolate, so kind of switch this out, put the 2 to the power 1 minus a on this side, and then isolate the 2 to the a on this side. And then multiply these together. It's pretty much the same thing, but it's kind of faster. You're, so basically, you're trying to isolate the exponential pieces and then multiplying them together. Because when you multiply, you're going to add the exponents, so a is going to cancel out. You're going to end up with 2 to the power 1, which equals 1 minus y or times x minus 1, and then divide by x minus 1, and you're going to get the answer pretty much. So it's going to look like this, and then we can add y to both sides, or we can also do the following, subtract 1 from both sides, and then multiply both sides by negative 1. So that's going to give you negative 2 over x minus 1 plus 1, and then make a common denominator, you'll get the exact same thing. Make sense? So basically, we are able to express y in terms of x. But is this always that easy? And the answer is no. Because what happens if you get something like this? Let's say they told you, okay, x is equal to 1 plus 2 to the power t, and then y is equal to t minus 2 to the power t. And in this case, you're not going to be able to solve uh, y in terms of x because this is going to be pretty non-standard. Okay, or in another uh, scenario, you can have something like 1 plus cosine theta and y is equal to 2 minus sine theta. This is actually doable because you can isolate sine and cosine and then square and add them. Notice that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1 and you can easily find one of them in terms of the other that way. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.